Olumde gave us um, his thoughts on um, illegitimacy and you know how certain people, certain institutions seem to knowingly or in some cases unknowingly propagate this and you know gave us the breakdown as to how to be legally or uh, for your marriage to be legally recognized in Nigeria, specifically here in Nigeria, two important uh ceremonies or acts that need to be taking place are the court wedding and or the traditional wedding where a bride price is paid in full not partially if you're paying installments make sure you pay it in full before you are it's even funny <laughs> how will a woman stay in with a man who has not paid her bride price or not right then you keep giving birth then he's even cruel to you he beats you up and he's not married to you Okay, no, I see if, if you are married, that will give him the right to beat of you course, up. Of but course. you know, you suffer for absolutely know, nothing. You are not now, after 14 yes, years, you now realize that your white wedding certificate is absolutely rubbish. It is not, not only have you been in a legally illegal <laughs> relation that is, according to law, it is illegal, it is, it is illegitimate, it is illicit. It is criminal. Then, according to your own religion, again, it is called you have been fornicating for as long as you have been married. And then you are a leader. Pastors should ask for the marriage certificate of everybody, and they should even ask for the marriage certificate of the pastor to, to be sure that he, he too is, he is legally married. Before you can now do guardians and counseling, marriage counseling to for people, are you married? Then you put these people as heads of department. There will be problems. E even if you're married, it does also not be qualified to be a guardian. Yes, and but I at think least, proper training should, should be done. At least you should even have the basic, the foundation to. Okay, let me do that. Let's, let's I'm moving into divorce so now. I can open my phone my yes, uh, maybe this divorce is going to move into because. I know so many have, some people have already started sending messages. Mm. Divorce uh, is uh, defined as the legal dissolution of a marriage by a court or other competent bodies. The origin of divorce is from the Latin word divotium, which means to turn aside or to put apart. The word divorce is such a heavy word for Christians and almost a taboo as some cannot even get themselves to pronounce the word as it is almost an abomination as they think it's sacrilege by the Bible itself. So whether you're in an abusive or violent marriage, the Christian thing is to remain in it. We know that divorce for most churches is a no-no. It is forbidden in the Bible. So where a lot of them see marital situations of violence, to the point of deadly violence. But they cannot get themselves to tell these people, you need to divorce. What they do is they give them the phone number of Barista Olumide so that the aborigine Barista Olumide is the person who can say what they cannot say. So if anybody is to go to hell for mentioning the name divorce, it will be Barista Olumide and not them because God has told them that they cannot divorce a person and the person, even if the person will die, let them remain in the marriage that will kill them. So this is a problem for Christians, basically, if everyone would agree. So let me talk to the Christians, especially to clergy and pastors. You might want to get a biro and a paper. The first place divorce was mentioned in the Bible is in Deuteronomy chapter 24 from verse 1. Now, ladies and gentlemen, whenever you want to do Bible study, you must have with you a King James Version, an Amplified Version, a New Living Translation, and there is uh, another, it's MSB, but you know, it's not very common, it's not very common. It's uh, MSB Bible, and then the Passion Bible. It is important you get the Passion Bible. It is in contemporary English. Only that the New Testament, they, were, they translated just three books in the New Testament, but all of the New Testament was translated there. You cannot do serious Bible study with one translation. With these translations, you can download the app. 
nobody would need to tell you what by reading it you will understand you must have the amplified bible have the king james version the new living translation the new international version and then please get that passion in the bible so um the bible says study to show yourself approved a workman that needs not be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth so you need to have those please so the first place divorce is mentioned in the Bible is in Deuteronomy chapter 24, which tells you that divorce was in the Bible and was in Jewish law. I would read Deuteronomy 24.1. It says, when a man, according to the kingdom's version, when a man had taken a wife and married her, and it comes to pass that, he, that she finds no favor in his eyes, because he has found some uncleanness in her, then let him write her a bill of divorcement and give it in her hand and send her out of his house. The Amplified Version says, when a man takes a wife and marries her, and then she finds no favor in his eyes because he has found some indecency in her, and he writes her a bill of divorce, puts it in her hand and sends her out of his house now verse 2 says and when she is departed out mm -hmm. of his house she may go and be another man's wife I think that one is clear enough uh, that is clear enough if she leaves then she's free to marry another man verse 3 says and if the latter husband hates her and writes her a bill of divorcement and gives it in her hand and sends her out of his house or if the latter husband die and took her to be in his wife then her former husband, which sends her away, may not take her again to be his wife after that she is defiled, and for that is an abomination before the Lord, and thou shalt not cause the land to sin. So verse 4 says, Then her former husband, according to the Amplified, then her former husband, who sent her away, may not take her again to be his wife after she is defiled. That means after she has been with another man, for that is an abomination before the Lord, and you shall not bring guilt upon the land. So, verse 5 says, When a man takes a new wife, he shall not go out with the army or be charged with any business. He shall be free at home for one year to cheer his wife whom he has taken. So, Deuteronomy tells you here that when a man marries, this is now, First of all, you have to understand that this was to the Jews. This Deuteronomy 24 is to the Jews. It is to Israel. This was said to the Israelites. And it tells you when a man takes a wife and marries her, and she finds no favor in his eyes. The condition for divorce was to find no favor in his eyes, which is very ambiguous because that means that according to his mood he can divorce because what is favorable in my eye might not be the same thing favorable in the eyes of Onyinye so there was no standard now the Hebrew word for that uh, divorce is shilwat which means sending away a wife now has no favor in his eyes is the condition for divorce according to Deuteronomy. So that word is called Eswat Daba in Hebrew, which signifies some uncleanness. That is, if he finds some uncleanness. Another translation says, if he finds a matter of nakedness. So this Deuteronomy 24.1 paved way for two schools of thought amongst the Jewish rabbis, which is the school of Shammai and the school of Heliel, which would metamorphosize in the New Testament to the Sadducees and the Pharisees. Those were the two major schools in Jewish uh, religion. So, the school of Shammai and the school of Heliel. Now, Shammai and his followers maintain that Ewath Daba, which is divorce, which is sending away of him, uh, which is that favor that she does not find in the husband's eye. 
Remember that it says, and she does not find favor in his eyes. That I not find favor is Edward Daba. Shammai and his followers maintain that that signifies nothing less than adultery, that it was only adultery that was reason for divorce, while Hillel and his followers placed greater stress on the words if she finds no favor in his eyes and contended at that time that divorce can be granted as long as a man no longer desired his wife. So divorce became for such reasons as a woman breaking a dish or careless seasoning of food. The food is not sweet. I am not doing it again. And some argued then, as it was the tradition of the rich, that if they found a woman that was more beautiful than their wives, that would be a reason for them to divorce their wife and take another. So it was called putting away your wife. But for whatever reason, for whatever interpretation, it was clear that there were two schools of thought that one was adultery and the other was for any reason that the man does not find favor. So it became a Hebrew uh, tradition according to law. But according to the same law, there are only two reasons in the Old Testament that you cannot divorce your wife. Two reasons that you cannot divorce your wife and it is in the book of Deuteronomy 22 13 which is a man who has falsely accused his wife of infidelity and it was proved that she did not commit infidelity that man that man's punishment was that he could never divorce the wife it is in Deuteronomy 22 13 then the second reason you can never divorce is if a man seduces a virgin that was not bestowed or espoused to another if she was a virgin and you disvirgent her by seduction in accordance or in addition with a heavy penalty that you would be paid the man must marry that woman and cannot divorce her except only the father of the bride refuses the man to marry his daughter but the man would have to pay a fine but only those two reasons was a man not able to divorce his wife number one a man who falsely accuses his wife of infidelity and then she proves that it was a lie it is not true once it is found out that it's not true the man cannot divorce the wife forever or a man who seduces rapes molests or whatever a virgin you would have to so therefore only those two conditions according to Jewish law can you not divorce so we move further as they would quote uh, the book of Malachi chapter 2 uh, verse uh, 16 that you should not uh, oh, please give me a second oh, no momento papa for <laughs> uh, Malachi, let me just give me a was second. That, was that Spanish you just spoke? Yes. So Malachi 2, 16. This is what people put. For the Lord God of Israel said he hates putting away for one covered violence with his garment, says the Lord of hosts. You see, at times when King James Version is just too calm, then you go to the Amplified Version. For the Lord God of Israel says, I hate divorce and marital separation, and him who covers his garment, that is his wife, with violence. So that is the beginning of the place where God says he hates domestic violence, who covers his wife with violence. Two things the Lord hates divorce marital separation and someone who is violent with his wife now who was god talking to here he was talking what they did not look at was that malachi 2 1 god was talking to the priests and now the priest this commandment is for you malachi 2 1 so therefore what is Jewish divorce? Jewish divorce is divorce without cause. 
because she does not have to do anything. You found a woman who is prettier than your wife. That was grounds enough for you to divorce. She does not, she argues with you. She raises her voice. I am not doing it again, according to Deuteronomy 24. So when God says he hates divorce and he hates, don't put away the wife of your youth. Why? Put away there is according to Deuteronomy that is sending her away for no reason. And it was to the Jews. <clears throat> so when you look at Matthew 5, when God Jesus said, when they asked Jesus, so is it lawful to put away the wife? There were only two schools, that is the Pharisees and the Sadducees. One of them believed it was only for adultery. The other believed that you could put her away for anything. In the option, Jesus said, only for adultery because the others were that you could put her away for anything. Now, you now want to compare Jewish law with the Nigerian. There was no other law in any way in the world where divorce was for nothing. Only the Jews divorced for no reason at all. It was There was even a popular Pharisee that married a new wife every year. Now, what led to this is that a woman will be in this genealogy and next year she would be sent out and marry another person and be in that genealogy and then that man sends her away she now marries another person so one woman will be in three different genealogies that was what god did not want with it because it contaminated the family tree one woman three different men in three different genealogies that was what God did not like. Because if you are tracing the genealogy of Adam to Christ, you will find out that there is nobody whose name appears twice. But in other genealogies, their names appear twice because the wife of this would soon become the wife of that. And that was the divorce God hates. The Jewish divorce, which was divorce for no reason. In every other country, before you divorce, it must be for a reason. In Nigeria, the Marriage Act, which is the law of the land that provides legislation for divorce, tells you, for marriage, tells you that it must fall under either adultery, domestic violence and abuse, irreconcilable differences. They give you reasons, which is different from the Jewish divorce. Now, the problem with clergy is that you now want to impose the Jewish kind of divorce on the, on the Nigerian legal system. They are not the same thing. So if, listen, domestic violence and abuse was already settled in the Old Testament, people did not know.